Welcome to our worship for Sunday, November 6th. This is All Saints Sunday within our church where we celebrate those who have gone before us and passed on the faith to us, that great cloud of witnesses. And so as we begin today, I ask you to join with me as we come together for confession and forgiveness. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, Come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions in his head as he lay in bed. And he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, 
saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. And I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 149. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their ruler. Let them praise their maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in the people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and the two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings and chains and nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decree. This is the glory for all God's faithful ones. Alleluia. Our second reading is from Ephesians, the first chapter. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were first to set our hopes on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that has been named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on the count of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. 
Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. place where we can be known and seen and loved and welcomed. And so, as we continue on our journey, may we know these little slices, these little pieces of what your kingdom will look like. Amen. So I'm going to begin in a little different way today. Now, if you're at home and you're sitting down, what I'd like you to do is close your eyes. And I I know that's a little different, but you'll be just fine not looking at me and, and, and being able to see me as I, as I give this part of the sermon, because I want your mind to be able to be open to what I'm going to talk about and what I'm going to ask you to imagine. So I'm going to ask you to imagine coming home. Now I don't mean coming home to the house that you're living in right now after work, although it may be that house. I'm wanting you to think about a place that embodies what home is for you. A place, a time, a a group of people that that have that meaning, that richness, that that place where you know that you you come in and you walk in the door I want you to imagine dropping your bags at the door, knowing that, you know, at least for the moment, you don't need them right now. Maybe you're imagining a place where you're coming in and maybe a memory is forming for you where you're coming in from a time where it was perhaps cold or 
or wet outside. And so if you have, have a coat on, take it off. And, you know, if somebody's there to receive it or if there's a hook to hang it on, hang it on that place. You know, if you have wet shoes or snowy boots or whatever, take them off. Just be willing to, you know, let this be a place where you can be in your socks or your bare feet. Let it be a place where no one's going to judge you for that. What do you smell? What's cooking? You know, is it a, are there children making cookies? Is there a, a large meal that's being prepared? Is there someone outside with a grill? Is, is there a feast fit for a king? Who's there to greet you when you walk in the door who cannot wait to welcome you and, and embrace you in a hug? You and whoever came there with you. If the TV happens to be on in the place where you're imagining, I want you to turn away from any kind of news. Leave that for another day. May it be on, oh, I don't know, a, par a parade or a, uh, a holiday show or a football game where people are talking and kibitzing around it or, you know, whatever it is that home looks like for you. I want you to think about the people who are there. Again, maybe you're remembering a memory from the past and some of those people are no longer there to, to be with. Maybe you're remembering a time that's much more recent or maybe you're remembering a, a time when you know, as people you've lost connection with, and maybe it's a conglomeration of all these things, a bringing of, of some people from the past, some people from the present, and, and bringing it all together into a place where all of them welcome all of you. Welcome home. Leave your baggage at the door. Every need is being prepared for you. For in this house there are many rooms. And your place among them is one as an honored, not guest, but as a part of this family. You can open your eyes now. It's a powerful image, home. It's a place that I know for me is, is a lot of times memory. You know, my life as an adult has been that of a, a person who's moved from place to place and has, again, I don't regret that. But many of the people who I remember growing up with are, some are no longer here. But those are where my memories of home are. And I know I've smoothed over some of the rough spots. But I think for a lot of us, our lives have been times of movement, times of motion, times of go, go, go. Move from this to what's next. I think we've forgotten how to take that time of Sabbath, of rest, 
I think we've forgotten how to, you know, and I'm not saying not to pay attention to what goes on in the world, but I think we've stopped paying attention to what goes on in us. And you know, the people who were a part of my family, who are a part of my story, who are a part of my past, they weren't, none of them were, you know, what you would call noble or heroic or anything like that. They're just normal people. People who you could meet on the street going down today and, and you probably wouldn't recognize them as anything special or anything beautiful. And yet they are mine and I am theirs. You know, one of the things about this day is we remember those who are that cloud of witnesses who have gone before us, those who have set the table for us, those who have, have welcomed us in, those who have taken our coats or in other ways have embraced us or served us or walked with us, laughed with us, cried with us, loved with us, grieved with us. And we continue on our journey. But we long for home. We long for homecoming. You know, when Jesus comes down and speaks with his disciples in Luke's gospel, and, and I can't do this on, on film, I'll be able to do it when people are gathered in person, he doesn't stand up and look down on them. He comes down and he kneels down among them and he looks up to them. And then he begins to speak, blessed, happy are you. And many of these things that sound, that he talks about, being poor, mourning, um, you know, these are not the things that we consider that make us happy or blessed. And, I, and again, we don't consider ourselves blessed when others revile us or persecute us or any of those things. I mean, it's just, it's not the way in which we encounter the world. But the way I'm hearing this, this gospel this week is, blessed are you when you know that things aren't the way that they should be because you're not home yet, but you're on your way. And there is a homecoming in your future. Because you're journeying the path that Christ has journeyed and he's prepared a way for you and he's set a room for you and he will be there to welcome you in the door. Now Luke's gospel also has the counterpoint to it, the woes. Woe are you who are, who are comfortable now. Woe to you who are rich now. And I do think that part of that has to do with woe to you who who are content with the way things are because you've accepted this, this place, this space as the best that you will ever see. You've made this your home. And you've made your peace with the way things are. Even though your journey's not over either. Again, I've, I've lived my life in a number of places. I joke that I've, you know, my kids have seen a lot of the middle of the country from when they were born to, to now. You know, I, I need to write uh, this this poem someday and someday, and I haven't come up with the word, all the words for it. But but there is something to this idea that you know, home for me is is a George Strait song. You know, it's one of these things to where it's these memories and these places from you know, 40 years of my adult life, well, almost 40 years of my adult life. Um, you know, to where these these spaces and these places and, and it's this combination of all these different things.
And I know I'm not there yet. But I live in the hope of that time when Christ is in all and is all. I live in that hope of the glorious inheritance of the saints. I live in that hope of that homecoming where I set my bags down. I take off my coat and I walk through the door and I know that I am home. I am welcome. I am loved. And the communion of the saints smiles and laughs and eats and bakes. Maybe even kibitzes a little bit. And I and you are home with the saints who have gone before us, with the cloud of witnesses who have set the path to that place where Christ is in all and is all. Thanks be to God. Amen. I ask you to join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Creating God, source of all life, we rejoice in the incredible creation that you have given us to watch over. As you continue to renew your creation day by day, we ask that you grant both your people and leaders, global and local, a heart to care for the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, ruler of all the earth, where nations and communities yearn for peace and justice, we ask for your steadfast love and righteousness to guide those working for peace. Watch over those who dedicate their lives to the protection and service of others, including Ben, Bryson, Christian, Clayton, Daniel, Dylan, Ethan, Evan, Luke, Michael, Spencer, Sydney, Tyler B., and Tyler G. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, look on your children with compassion and ease their suffering. Ease the suffering of those dealing with emotional or physical pain. Have your healing hand upon Aubrey, Avery, Betsy, Billy, Bob, Brenda, Brandon, Campbell, Carlene, Cohen, Dan, Dennis, Denver, Donna, Eliza, Gary, Jamie, Jan, Judy, Lori, Linda, Michaela, Maureen, Mike, Nolan, Roger, Sandy C, Sandy P, Stacy, Tom, and Wayne, and those we lift up in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ministries of the ELCA in the Northern Texas and Northern Louisiana Synod. We also lift up in prayer today Oslo Lutheran Church in Grouper, Faith Lutheran Church in Sagerton, and NTNL ministry teams. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, on this All Saints Day, we remember those who have gone before us and those who you have welcomed home into into your mansion, which has many rooms. And while we may mourn their loss, 
their loss in our lives, their loss in our conversations. We look forward to that day when we can be reunited with them around your table. And so we lift up in prayer today Leanne Armstrong, Bill Brisbane, Bill Brisboy, Wilson Shook, Javier Greca, Rowan Bush, Kathy Luster, Caleb Edwards, Jai Gilbert, Steve Greaser, Tanya Erdman, Roger Hyde, Dinah Eisenbrom, Jonathan Tom, David Eisenbrom, Denny Franklin, Judy Suter King, Nikki DeVries, Laura Franklin, Elizabeth Donner, Rodney Hayes, Elizabeth Westbrook, Carl Singer, Mary Dorothy Higa, Marie Dorothy Higa, Chuck Gersitz, Robert Stamp, Sandy Woods, John McGuire II, Hugh Adams, Scotty Peterson, Gary Coleman, M.K. Hosuar, Jeremy Gray, Billy Boyd, Mary Gregorview and Alan Warner. Lord, in our mer your mercy, hear our prayer. Now may the peace of God be with you as you gather together with family and friends on this All Saints Sunday. This is also the part of the service where we collect our offering, and I just want to say, Thank you. Thank you for the ways in which you make this ministry here at Rejoice possible. Um, and again, although Adam and I are the ones who are normally up in front, we can't do it without you. And so as we go into this season, you know, thank you for the ways in which you continue to make Rejoice a part of, of your budget, a part of your, ministry, your mission, and, and you really are a part of this ministry that we do together. And so again, if you want to contribute to Rejoice, you can either uh, send a physical offering to our, our physical location at 12,000 Independence Parkway. Or you can give one of the multiple ways through Tithely, either through the Tithely app on your phone, um, the Give Now button on our website, or if you're watching this on YouTube, there should be a link to that as well below here, below the video. But again, I just want to say thank you for the ways in which you make this ministry. You make this ministry work and you make this ministry uh, possible. this point we're going to prepare for communion so communion is a, a central part of our worship here at rejoice it's a place where we trust that christ meets us and so if you want to celebrate with us i invite you to gather together bread or and juice or bread and wine so that you may celebrate with your friends and families who you are gathered with at home we gather together and we remember how in the night in which he was betrayed, how our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for Christ sets this table for all of us.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in the sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your death and resurrection. May these gifts of your body and blood create in us the fruits of your redemption and grace in our lives for you to live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. As God has claimed us as his own in Christ, we seek to follow Christ with these marks of disciple life, praying daily, worshiping weekly, studying the Bible, serving others, building spiritual friendships, giving to God and our neighbors in need, engaging God's mission. Now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>